Hey, y'all. So as I move into my new position at the University of Tennessee, my family's growing. It's getting harder and harder to get these podcasts out at a reasonable rate. Because of that, I find myself recording in suboptimal conditions. A case in point this week, I was the teaching fellowship a few weeks ago in Dallas, Texas, and I ran across Jess Mason, who is a phenomenal individual and runs the MRAP HD and does the podcast, This Won't Hurt a Bit. You'll hear more about it in the podcast. Basically, the reason I'm giving this little intro is to explain why the audio quality is so bad. Really, we couldn't find another room to record in, and we really wanted to go through this case. So enjoy this slightly longer than five minute sono video on the Radio Lucent Gallstone. Hello, my name is Jacob Avila, 5 Minutes Sono, and today I'm joined by the one and only Jess Mason, who I met here at the Teaching Fellowship, the ASAP Teaching Fellowship here in Dallas. Now, Jess, why don't you tell us all that you're involved with? A brief synopsis? Yeah, try. Okay. <laughs> so I do the MRAP HD teaching videos, and I also work on several podcasts, including This Won't Hurt a Bit, which is a medical podcast for the general public. Mm -hmm. I have the privilege of co-hosting with the amazing Dr. Mel Herbert, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's an amazing podcast. I haven't listened to as many of those as I liked, but the few I've listened to have been amazing. And you do uh, MRAP HD as well, right? Yeah, yep. so we're working on putting together more and more videos, um, teaching videos and visuals to supplement the audio content on MRAP. Awesome, awesome. Uh, really good content there. I would definitely recommend checking that out. Thanks. All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about a case. Now, this case is a 65-year-old female. She presents with epigastric and right upper quadrant pain. Now, she has already seen her primary care doctor. She's done what she was supposed to do, got labs, and the labs didn't really show anything. She's scheduled for a right upper quadrant ultrasound to be done in two to three weeks, but she's having a lot of pain. The pain obviously is worse when she eats, but now it's just consistent. Now, what will you do for this patient if she comes into your ER? So right off the bat, I have a higher level of concern. Mm -hmm. She's 65 years old and presenting with abdominal pain. Right. And just based off of age and chief complaint, she is a high risk group. So I would be inclined after doing a history and exam to repeat the labs that her primary doctor did, including her abdominal labs um, and uh, liver function. Mm -hmm. And then I'm definitely gonna be getting some imaging on her. Absolutely, absolutely. So what, what kind of imaging would you get? I think she needs a CAT scan. Right, well she's 65. Right, yeah. and then probably, considering the name of this blog, I'm yeah. probably gonna get an ultrasound. Right, exactly. Now, if this patient came in, she was, I don't know, 35, maybe even 45, I think you would probably not do the CT scan, um, just because she has pretty classic symptoms of gallbladder disease, but in a patient that's 65 years old, just with her chief complaint and her age, she actually has a mortality rate of 10%. Uh, some studies say that. So I would definitely still get the CT scan on her, understanding that the CT scan isn't going to show us everything, and the ultrasound is not necessarily going to show us everything. So it's a good idea to get both. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. So that would be the next step for me, probably start with the CT, probably be able to get the ultrasound a little quicker. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that can be potentially an advantage and absolutely. maybe spare her from the excess radiation. Yeah, absolutely. So on this patient, I did just that and we got labs back and they didn't show really anything abnormal. I had a white count of 13, but you know, if I run up and down the stairs, you know, three or four times, I'm sure my white count would be 15 at least. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of non-specific, right? Now the, we got the CAT scan first and the CAT scan, unfortunately, didn't really tell us anything. I mean, it was good. It was, you know, no aortic disease, nothing catastrophic going on. But the thing that I wanted to evaluate the most, which was the gallbladder, actually was shown to have no gallstones and no evidence of acute colostomy. Status, which is kind of crazy to me. Yeah, and that's interesting. And it's also, I think, right there at that point, a reason to do more. You can't stop there. You have a 65 year old with right. worsening abdominal pain and you don't have an answer yet. So you need to do additional testing to see what's going on with her. <laughs> now, there's one thing that I have to mention that I actually didn't know, and that's the fact that gallstones don't always show up on a CT scan. It's kind of crazy. I actually found this reference on Radiopedia. There's mm -hmm. the link right there. And if you scroll down, why don't you tell me what it says? So the CAT scan says that pure cholesterol stones are hypo-attenuating to bile and calcified gallstones are hyper-attenuating to bile. Some gallstones may be isodense to bile and may therefore be missed by CT. That's crazy, right? Because we think the CT scan's the gold standard that will tell us everything. Yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. So I'm guessing you got the ultrasound. I did, so and, what do we see? and this is our ultrasound right here. Uh, why don't you tell me what you see? So I'm looking at the liver on the left side of the screen, mm -hmm. and where I would be looking for the gallbladder, typically, I, I find this actually difficult to interpret because I'm not seeing a clear gallbladder. I'm seeing a, a 
big shadow, and I'm seeing a nice, bright, hyper attenuating, is it fair to call that? Yeah, yeah, call absolutely, absolutely. Um, but a nice bright line and then a big shadow beyond that. So I'm not sure exactly what is in the gallbladder, but um, this is definitely abnormal, and I bet you there is an ultrasound term for this that you can enlighten me on. <laughs> right, so what we're seeing here, we absolutely right, we have the liver over here, and then all of this stuff where we're seeing the shadowing off of it here, all this acoustic shadowing, this is actually a gallbladder that is completely to the brim, filled with gallstones. I actually call this the hacky sack gallbladder. This is very similar to something that's called the wall echo shadow sign, which is basically when there's just a giant gallstone in the lumen of the gallbladder that basically obliterates the lumen. And that's essentially what we're seeing in this image right here. So this is a very diseased looking gallbladder. Mm. It's actually, I mean, it's an interesting image because it's, I find it hard to interpret since I don't clearly even see right. definitively that that is the gallbladder as it classically looks. I just see that um, that more anterior wall, mm -hmm. nice and bright, and that big shadow beyond it. Exactly. And the key is, is to make sure that that shadow is staying within the lumen of what looks like the gallbladder on that image. This is a very diseased gallbladder. Now, luckily with this patient, I was able to admit her based off my ultrasound and off her symptoms. And she got a radiology, a comprehensive ultrasound later in the day. And a little time after that, actually got it taken out by a surgeon. Yeah, no, that's a really interesting case. I think, I think the big learning point for me in this case is that a CAT scan is not definitive. It is not the definitive study. Um, and sometimes an ultrasound can show you something that you might have missed otherwise. So I just want to clarify what Jess said there. So the CT scan is usually the test of choice, honestly, for most of the things. But in this particular case, the CT scan was not the test of choice. It was actually the ultrasound. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, the CAT scan definitely should have been obtained in this patient, but a negative CT scan meant that we had to get further imaging. And the further imaging in this case was ultrasound. I mean, usually it's actually the other way around. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. Jess, thanks so much for being on the show with me. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. If you ever have any questions or comments, feel free to email me or send me a tweet. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put your name and your email address in a little text box and never miss another video. And if you want it sent directly to your phone, you can always go to iTunes or whatever other podcasting service you use. Type in 5-Minute Sono and subscribe.